Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to go through 15 knives that whenever I first got them I did not expect to like them at all but my opinions changed rather quickly once I started using them or once I actually got them in hand. Let's get started first up with the QSP Hornbill. This one I saw at Blade Show and I, I don't really love the carbon fiber that they, they went with on this especially with the milling pattern because you can't even really see it but I have to say that I love the blade shape. It's an S35VN. It's got beautiful action. You got thumb studs that you can thumb flick it, verse flick it on that blade hole. And you can also use this front flipper, but I, I don't usually use it at all. It, it's rather comfortable because I can choke up on it. This one really changed for me whenever I did the testing with this knife. It really blew me away. And after I put my own edge on it, the performance on this knife just jumped dramatically. Some of the best S35 that I've tested this year, I have a few of them that kind of shocked me in S35 this year because I test a lot of knives and some of them just don't perform all that great. I mean, you know, either I got a lemon or the HRC on them is kind of low, but it seems like this one is up there in the, you know, I would have to say in the 60, 61 range, maybe a little higher, but it did great. It has a nice mill titanium pocket clip. I like that short clip. It's not reversible, however, but overall, this one really shocked me, like I said, once I started doing the testing, and that happens, and I love when that happens because I love to be able to bring them to y'all and let y'all know what I experienced. Number two, surprisingly, is the Volsteed Thunderbird. Now, this is the original version, the bigger version, and even though I like the looks of this one, I never really connected with the, the larger version. Whenever I got this one, I immediately like, eh, you know, I know how I feel about that, but I was surprised because they didn't tell me that this one is a little bit smaller. This one has a 3.2 inch blade and that was a game changer for this knife for me. I love the overall size of it. Now this one didn't surprise me as much as the titanium version. The reason why this one surprised me so much is because the action on this knife is ridiculous. I mean, when I say snappy, and I hope that is the same across the board. If you have one of these new Volsteed Thunderbird 3.2 inch with the tie scales, let me know how snappy your action is. If, if it's like this, like super snappy, let me know. I wanna make sure that, you know, it's across the board. You know, button locks can be hit or miss. I'm not a huge fan of button locks. This is the Trek lock, just a system where they're able to do all three deployment methods, blade hold, back flipper, front flipper. And even the front flipper works good on this one. Uh, my larger one, the detent isn't as crisp as this one, and it doesn't flip like this one does. Now, I don't ever use the front flipper. I'm not a real big front flipper fan. I use this because that rockets out, and I like to do the reverse flick with this one. Like I said, this one kind of changed my opinion on the Thunderbird because I like the overall size. If any of these knives interest you, I will have links down below. They are affiliate links. They do help support what I do here on the channel. And if you enjoy that and you want, and you're already planning on buying the knife, if you, that is one way to help support the channel. But no biggie if you don't there, if you, if you want to help. Number three is the Concept Tuckum War. Now for me, Concept is kind of hit or miss. You know, I, I like some of their stuff uh, and I don't like some of their other stuff. But this one, you know, I, I first looked at it and the overall aesthetics were, I was 50-50 on it. I, I got this one in hand, first started flipping it, very smooth, excellent reverse flicker. If you like reverse flicking, this one's great. I can thumb flick it, I can slow roll it, but it also changed whenever I started the testing with this one. It's so comfortable in hand. It's got contour titanium scales where you can get carbon fiber inlays. This one's micarta comes with several different inlays. You have a beautifully done contoured mill titanium pocket clip. Uh, they did an excellent job with the Tuck of War. It's not the sliciest in the world, but it's still pretty darn slicey. It's, it, this one's probably, I think it's 20 thousandths or somewhere in that area behind the edge, which is nice and slicey. That's a Spyderco PM2. It is gonna thicken up rather quickly though, cause you have a sharp flat grind, but overall I still carry and use this one a lot. Nice stone wash finish, yeah. Number four is the Spyderco Manic 2 Lightweight GP Knives Exclusive and Rec 45. The reason why this is on this list is because I own the Spy 27 Lightweight. I've owned a Manix 2 in Lightweight and Maximet. 
I've owned the BD1 version. And even though I like this one, I did not connect with this one as much as I have with this one. I think it's for a few reasons. I think it's because of that black blade. I like it. I don't love the white. If you're a Star Wars fan, you might like the Stormtrooper look. But you could easily rip dye these any color you want because they are, they're white. And these aren't pinned on construction, so you can change these out once an aftermarket company starts making scales for them. I, I don't know what it is about this one. Maybe it's, it's the way uh, they, they did everything on this. The action feels better. The blade is just so slicey. The grind on mine is nice and even. Just a lot about it. I already got a character uh, mark on it right there. I was cutting something and a wire was sticking out of it. Not a big deal. These are priced well, in my opinion, for Rex 45. Uh, the FRN is plenty strong enough. And ask anybody who's bought one of these. I have not heard, and there, I'm sure there's somebody that didn't like it, but I have not heard anybody complain about this exclusive from GP Knives. Another one that you'd probably be surprised about is my number five, and that is the Volsteed RS Chaos. And the only reason I wasn't super excited about this knife is because of this compound grind. To me, it just didn't make any sense. You got the thicker portion. It's such a small grind right here. Then you have the thinner up here. But once I got this knife and started using it and started fidgeting with it, this thing has an amazing action. And when I say rock solid, it has the button compression lock, or what they're calling a top liner lock. You can see this button's hooked to this top liner lock that, that goes into a position right there, sandwiched in between that stop pin. Super, super secure lockup. And then stupid smooth, also keeping your fingers out of the blade path when closing, so it's rather safe. You have two means of deployment that work great, M390 blade, and this one has become one of my favorites this year. Number six, we have the QSP Hedgehog. This is a traditional pocket knives exclusive. And I already, I like the Hedgehog. The, I have the Jig Titanium one. I liked it. I just didn't carry it a, a whole bunch. But this one, with the extra milling on the tie to accept these uh, camo carbon scales, which they have several different uh, versions of the camo carbon, you can pick your flavor. And they also have, I think, all tie with different milling patterns on them. The Hedgehog's, this thing, let's listen to this. Nice and tight, walk and talk, easy to pinch. And this thing is a slicing machine. Look at that, look at that hollow grind. If you're looking for a super, super slicey knife, this one's nice and lightweight, perfect size for my medium sized hands. This thing slices like nobody's business. So needless to say, I was pleasantly surprised on how much more I like this one because of the weight relieving. It just really, it's so light. And just as an add-on, because these are both excellent, this is traditional pocket knives own design. This is a Lake Champlain Barlow, the Sheep's Foot Edition. Another one that is, this is a nice full size slip joint. If you're looking for a slip joint that's nice and large, this one has the gecko camo carbon, I think it is, or it might be fat carbon. I'm not sure. I always get those confused. Another full flat grind that comes down nice and thin. Look at that hollow. This one performed excellent in my review and testing. Both of these, you know, I, I, I love me some traditional pocket knives. It's been a pleasure working with these guys. Super nice, and I, I just love their designs. I'm pretty certain. I'm not 100% because <clears throat> I, I forget. But I think the Hedgehog was actually their design. It was a collaboration with QSP. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the case. But both of these, outstanding. This one, like I said, just kind of took me by surprise on how much more I liked it compared to the all tie version. Number seven, we have the Big Idea Designs tie folder. And let me explain myself. Whenever I saw this on Blade HQ and I saw the price tag and I was just kind of looking at the materials, I was very underwhelmed, I'm gonna be honest. But then I got this in hand and just felt the quality and what I expect from Big Idea Designs. I knew I loved the blade shape. It's got a hollow grind, S35 VN that I'm pretty certain I asked them and it's Rockwell the 60 to 61 and it performed very, very well. It's a medium sized knife. I still get a nice four finger grip on it. And like I said, once I got it and I was going to break this thing down and realized there wasn't a screw here, which I should have known because Big Idea Designs is very big on innovation. They don't ever just do something the easy way. They always try to innovate and they made it 
a one piece construction on the on the show side and on the lock side by sandwiching together these two with this plate that screws down into an, this backspacer right here I, it's on my video show and kind of how it works but yeah i kind of understood the price tag and being their first folder they absolutely knocked it out of the park it's got that ceramic ball interface like on the chris reeve knives sabenza 31 and the umnums on it's kind of hard to show in there i kind of showed that a little bit better in my uh, full review and testing number eight we have the Sincut traxler this one, the blade, uh, the Spanish razor or Spanish chip razor looking blade kind of underwhelmed me. It just looked kind of plain, but depends on how you're looking at this knife as a everyday beater or just an excellent high value knife. This is awesome. The action, excellent. This blade slices like nobody's business. You got a high flat grind. The steel on this one's a 9CR18 and we know Sincut does a great job with it for the price point. You have the high flipper tab, so you have tons of momentum. This thing comes out nice. It's a full-size knife. It's comfortable. And another one that kind of shocked me during my testing. This one performed outstanding. Next up, we have number nine, the Flytanium Arcade. And when I first did the unboxing of this, I was a little underwhelmed because they have some hard edges on the aluminum that are pretty sharp right here and all right here. And I measured the behind-the-edge thickness on my knife, and it's it's... Not the thinnest behind the edge. It's not overly thick, but it's definitely not the thinnest. I should have expected that because it has the, the patented shark lock. They license it from Andrew Demko. Talk about a fun lock to use and a safe lock. Keep your fingers out the blade path. But after I started doing the testing, this thing impressed me so, so much. And after I started investigating a little bit more on why it was performing so good is because the edge bevel on mine... I think from what I can recall is like 15 degrees per side making this thing perform outstanding now it's gonna thicken more and more as you start sharpening it but depends on how much you sharpen your knives this s35 VN did outstanding the aluminum frame looks like tie you can change out these inlays these are canvas micarta you can change out the titanium thumb studs for different colors I think they might have a pocket clip upgrade. I'm not sure. You can get a backspacer. There's a lot of customization, and we wouldn't expect anything less from Flytanium. The arcade was a pleasant surprise. Number 10, we had the Two Your Knives Rad. Let me explain myself. A lot of the Two Your Knives, they're not ground super thin. They, like, they're thin enough, and they perform good. They just don't wow me. And when I first saw this design, I couldn't, I didn't really look at the compound grind, and I did not expect it to be a super slicer like this one is. And this one is one of the best dialed in to your knives that I've ever handled. This is a Dave Warren design, and he knocked it out of the park. The front flipper, I'm not even a front flipper fan, works outstanding because of how grippy that jimping is. And it sits above the frame, so it gives you a lot of momentum to flip it around. But this hollow grind is so nice and thin. It slices so well in this portion. Even this flat grind is still pretty darn thin. This thing performed amazing and blew me away. Number 11, we had the Kaiser Hunter, I think it is. If I mess that up, I'll put it up here. The overall aesthetics of this knife are polarizing. And that's what kind of, I was like, eh, I don't know about that. But I do love interesting designs and this one is as interesting as they come it kind of reminds me of the uh grismo norseman that crazy blade shape with that recurve but when i got this one in hand this contouring and that width is so comfortable especially right here it, it it's wide right there it fills out the hand nicely the action on this thing redonkulous that thumb stud action is great and that that cool window that they got milled out right there is outstanding for the reverse flick and I, I gotta admit this blade shapes a lot more useful than I expected because you have such a big tanto portion right there I can use that secondary tip if I want to I can cut I can do rocking motions with the curvature right here the belly and then that recurve in the s35 v and it's a full flat grind recurve blade and whenever you start cutting it just pulls material in really really nicely so if you want something different and unique then this one may be the knife for you i'm sorry this is the kaiser huntsman number 12 we have the bag knives osteo and i'm gonna be real the the reason why this one was a turn off for me 
is the D2 steel and the price point and the pocket clip. But the more and more I carry and use this knife, <laughs> I love it. I love the overall aesthetics. I think it's a mean, mean looking knife. And I got to be honest, the, the D2 has got to be in the 61 range or 62 range because it holds an excellent edge. And the fit and finish on this knife is far above any of the budget end knives. I can definitely see where the price point is. Now, would I love this in 14C? Yes, no doubt. And I would buy it again in 14C. It's got a beautiful finish on the, the, the satin finish on there. You got the subframe lock. This one's super comfortable because that scoop. You got a guard with that flipper tab. The fit and finish is outstanding. I don't love the pot clip, but it works. And while we're on the bag knives, we got number 13, the, the Bodega. Now, I've always wanted a Bodega, but this is the only Bodega you're going to find under, you know, there's the, what is it, We Are the Riot version. I don't know who made them. And those are really no longer around unless you buy them the secondary. The customs are just super expensive. The action on both of these knives, just watch this. This thing comes rocketing out. It's got a nice hollow grind. You can also use that fuller to reverse flick. It's comfortable. It's got so much milling on here. This one is a weightier knife, more beefier knife. Harpoon blade, D2 steel on this one as well. Beautiful action. Both of these have really, really shocked me. I wasn't that big of a fan of them when I first got them. The more I carry and use them, I get it. Number 14 is probably going to be a shocker. We have the PMP Knives the Titano. Let me see if I can show you the blade. You, you can see the, the, the character marks, hopefully. I just finished the testing on this one. I'm not going to go too far into this one because I want you know, the review hasn't dropped yet. But the only thing I'm going to say about this one is, is this was the first PMP Knives that I've gotten that was a decent user as far as grind goes. Yeah, it's a folding shovel and this thing this whenever i carry this this is the only thing in the pocket because it is a beefy heavier knife m390 steel tie frame very well made last we have the microcheck msi picked this up at blade show and i was a little underwhelmed because of the action on this knife and how the detent strength from this ram lock whatever is rather light now I kind of got over that because when I carry this in my right pocket, it's up against my pants. I've never had any issues with this thing coming open like that in the pocket. I just did the testing with this one. And that's where I was kind of like, wow, because I know they don't run these. I think they run them like 58, 59. This is the uh, Microtech M390MK. It came stupid sharp. Beautiful action on mine i love love the frag i i picked this one out like i said at blade show clip works pretty good it is sitting on that frag so it it does kind of shred the pocket very smooth i just wish they could increase the detent strength a little bit somehow this thing so so robust it's so solid but i'm not gonna go too much further than this it, the performance on this is what kind of shocked me Y'all stay tuned for the full review of this one as well. So that's that's the 15 knives that shocked me most this year for one reason or another. It's either that they performed a lot better than I expected or the knife grew on me like this Huntsman or like the shock with the smaller version of the Thunderbird. I'm really shocked that this one just feels so much better than any of the other lightweights that I've owned. So let me know if you have any knives like, like this that... You know, you weren't expecting to like them as much, but once you, you know, got them and started using them or started handling them, your opinions changed. I like knowing that kind of stuff, you know, and it might be something that I'm like, oh, I need to try that one out. So if you have any questions about any of these, feel free to ask me down in the comments. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing Sunday, and I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Ah. Uh...